Good afternoon, wire wrapper and wider, I hope. This is Rotary Matters. It's a radio with pictures put together by the Rotary Clubs of the Wire Wrapper. That's a collaboration between the Masterton, Carterton, and South Wire Wrapper Rotary Clubs. Uh, so, um, interesting the name of the uh, program, Rotary Matters, a bit of a play on words. Uh, of course, a Rotary in the past has been a bit of a, I suppose you could say, a shadowy organisation in one sense. There's <laughs> not a lot known about it because the general mantra is service above self. And so, Rotary's been satisfied to just do good in the background and not particularly call attention to itself over the many years that it's been going. And so Rotary has been um, uh, doing good in the hood, as they say, um, without making too much noise, but it's a force of good. And it matters in the world. It should matter, and it should matter to you. Um, did you know, for instance, just in New Zealand alone, I've got a little list of things that Rotary's been responsible for in New Zealand that quite surprised me. For instance, in New Zealand alone, Rotary started the Crippled Children's Society in New Zealand, built the first Karatani Hospital. Our Rotary organised the first mobile TB clinic. Who would know these things? Um, Rotary was responsible for starting milk in schools. They bought the defensive driving courses to New Zealand. They were being operated by Rotary in Australia, uh, along with the authorities there, but um, we, it was Rotary that boarded across the ditch. Uh, we also began the first healthcare camps in New Zealand. Uh, the, the National Kidney Foundation, Riding for the Disabled, uh, the Asthma Society, started by Rotary, and the National Children's Health Research Foundation, all of these Rotary uh, at least had a huge hand in. Uh, internationally, of course, Rotary reaches further, far further. It's throughout the globe uh, with um, hundreds of thousands of members and thousands of clubs throughout the world doing everything they can to make life better for people in the world. They're... Uh, we, uh, for instance, have the End Polio Now program. It was I've said this on the last program, I spoke about End Polio Now. But it's an astounding program uh, when we think that such a short time ago, polio was a major killer, it was a major problem. The disease is now almost eradicated due to the, um, the force behind Rotary's um, efforts assistance with by people, for instance, like the Gates Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates. Uh, as Rotary put together uh, fundraising, do fundraising, put together um, packages, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation match uh, the money that we raise a two for one, which is an astounding gift to mankind. Uh, one of our... Um, Transitory members, <laughs> Phil Smith, who hails from uh, Smithport in Pennsylvania, currently stuck in the States, of course, with the current COVID situation. Uh, he's um, working hard along with the Crutches for Africa campaign, which another play on words, you know how we talk about we've got stuff for Africa. Well, these are crutches for Africa. So in the States, of course, people get by the crutches and you know, there's nothing they can do with them. They've just got them at home. Uh, crutches, wheelchairs, um, you know, walking frames, all those sorts of uh, health assistance devices. And they're all uh, just sitting around in people's garages and cupboards and attics and stuff. And so uh, the Crutches for Africa campaign advertise and gather up the crutches throughout the states, or actually throughout the world, wherever they can get them. Uh, pop them in containers, container loads of crutches, and send them off to 
uh, countries who don't have crutches, where people are uh, crawling around uh, really uh, on their hands and knees, if they've got hands and knees. Uh, so huge makes a huge difference in the world today. Um, the our main focus is on promoting peace, fighting disease. Uh, we provide clean water, uh, embracing the basic principles of peace and unity. Uh, we have a mantra, or our, our, I guess, our guiding principle. We call the four-way test, and it goes like this. In everything you think, say, and do, measure against this. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Is it beneficial to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? So, as I say, Rotary does matter. It matters in the world. It has a great um, a founding, founding principle. Uh, and as we move into the future uh, the the structure of rotary will is already changing it of course was set up uh, by businessmen in its infancy and it was um, a club of male philanthropists who had got together small number at the time but it expanded and it was uh, like-minded businessmen uh, starting obviously in the united states uh, but in, in recent years, of course, um, we have realised that our reach is so broad that the lives that we touch and affect so disparate that we need to, uh, a broader membership. And so uh, in recent years, relatively recent years, uh, we are embracing the uh, induction of women into our clubs, which has been a, a great step forward. And our upcoming conference has a theme of inclusiveness. So, uh, and uh, moving forward and change for the future. How do we change the model of Rotary so that it becomes and remains relevant to the future? We don't want to end up with that Kodak moment. Now, Martin Fair. <coughs> I know I've spoken again about Martin Brafair, but it is dear to my heart, I must say. I've spent quite a bit of time in, with the fair. I uh, was a co-convener of the fair uh, for about six years ago, well, I guess nine, and then co-convened for three years. So my duties in th at that stage were to change the way we ran the fair from a paper-based system to a computer-based system. So, I mean, that was 10, 12, 13 years ago, so you know, early days, I guess. Um, but we moved to a computerized paper-based system, so it's about time now we move to a cloud-based system. Now, that'll be another migration which will have to happen. But right at the moment, I, for my sins, have picked up the co-convenorship again and I'm looking after the Martin Raffair and of course our recent problem was the COVID-19 problem. So we were all lined up for our, we had the February fair which was a great success. Uh, our storeholders reporting um, uh, best days ever, best income ever. Uh, the uh, attendance by um, our shoppers, our, our fair goers, uh, was as high as ever for a February. February's often a bit lighter than March, I'd have to say. Uh, but nonetheless, in February, it was a good day, and um, uh, people were prepared to spend money, which, of course, made their, our customers, who are the storeholders, happy. Um, to explain that perhaps a little bit, our customers are the storeholders. We don't charge an entry fee to the fair. Uh, it's not practical in a town like Martinborough, which uh, has a central square and radiating streets. There's just no way to charge an entry fee as you might into, a, say, a, you know, a, a fair ground with a gate. So our 
income is derived from storeholders, so we charge the storeholders. And so our job is to look after the storeholders and make sure that they're well situated and well looked after and that they have shoppers who will buy stuff from them. Uh, so February was great, but then along came COVID and suddenly the week before we were faced with lockdown, a level two, a level three in Auckland, of course. So it was going, it was, that was Sunday morning and it was seven days. So it was going to be the next Saturday it was going to be out of the picture by one day. But in the back of our minds, we did have the Napier Art Deco uh, fair. Is it a fair? Uh, they cancelled. And then the level restrictions were lifted just before uh, it would have run. And so they came in for a certain amount of criticism for having pulled the plug too early. So we were faced with that, and uh, the Prime Minister's comments on the Saturday were that they would review during the week. Now, you know, this could be just a way of saying, calm down, all is well, we'll be looking at it, but all the time perhaps thinking, no, really, we need to stay in this for the full seven days. It was difficult, so we, we decided we'd wait until Tuesday and have a look and see what people were thinking by then. But of course by Monday people were saying, well I've got transport arrangements to change, I've got accommodation stuff that I've got to either uh, rebook or confirm or pay for or not pay for. And so by Monday we were listening to the reports from the um, health ministry and from the various authorities and listening to the reports on the news as everybody was and it seemed pretty unlikely that we'd be out of lockdown by Saturday so we brought the decision forward by a day. I guess we were sort of boxed into that as well because um, I had put a an announcement on Facebook uh, saying that we might have to, it looked as if we would have to move to our fallback date of the 10th and that we would have some meetings and make a decision shortly. But everybody looked at that April the 10th date and thought, oh, they're moving to April the 10th. And suddenly everybody's changing their bookings on the strength of that. They didn't quite read through to the end where I said we'll make the decision shortly. And then the Newtown Fair, of course, moved their date to the 11th. On the strength of, they said, the fact that Martin Raffair was moving to the 10th. So we're sort of a bit boxed in then. So um, with the appearance of the levels probably staying as they were for the weekend and the balance of people's perception, we changed it and went to the 10th. So now we've booked another date for May just in case we don't get the 10th of April either for whatever reason it might be the weather is not that good in April uh, or it may be COVID again so but we will announce clearly when we're going to move we hope uh, but the fair um, I've probably mentioned before and if you've heard me before that uh, was the brainchild of one Bill Fitch one of our members from way back in the 70s um, interesting, initially the fair was not well thought of. He brought back the idea from Germany when he'd been for a, an operation and saw it operating there, that, this model. Um, when he presented it to our club oversight, to the board, they said, no, it'll never fly. And they, were, they didn't believe in it at all. So... Um, I, I've heard Reece, a little while ago now uh, 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 folks from the Carterton Club saying that they had turned down the Martinborough affair. And uh, I wonder, I, and it's not documented exactly what happened, but I wonder where the bill had gone to Carterton because, of course, the South Wire Apple Rotary Club was a child of the Carterton Club. 
um, the Carterton Club formed the South Warrapa Rotary Club. So it's, made, it's quite possible that Bill, who was very keen to get this off the ground, had gone to the Carterton Club and perhaps floated the idea there. And they, like our board, looked at it and thought, yeah, it'll never fly. Uh, but Bill persevered, and by, uh, I think it only took a couple of years, <laughs> we're slow learners, eventually he was given permission to run the fair, and, and to be fair, the first fair did operate at a bit of a loss, so, you know, the board felt a bit vindicated, but it's gone on from there to be quite a successful operation. It's great for the district. It pulls in a reasonable amount of uh, money that make or makes a reasonable amount of money available for our club to put into the community. We're able to uh, support, uh, for instance, uh, three bursaries at the Kuranui College. Uh, we're able to support uh, a, a huge number of community requests. We have um, uh, the Youth Awards, uh, Pride of Workmanship Awards, and um, uh, many who uh, simply make applications through our website in the um, areas of youth and of community and environment. Um, uh, and w so we're able to support all that out of the money from the Martinborough Fair. Um, so who helps at the fair? Well, we've got the Lions. For a kickoff, the Martinborough Lions, a huge help from the Martinborough Lions. They've every year, for I don't know how many, well, most of the time, uh, have been handling the trestles for us. So they have, for instance, uh, expertise in um, forklift driving and have the manpower to manhandle the trestles. They're big wooden tables, uh, probably what, one point, a couple of metres wide uh, and you know half a meter you know deep on tr on you know, trestle legs so the three part organization so they bundle all those up from the various piles stock piles and deliver them around the fair to those who have ordered them uh, a couple of years ago we divested ourselves of the trestles and gave them to the lions club to look after and so they're able to um, hire them out or give them out loan them out, whatever, uh, themselves. Now they're completely in control of them. Uh, but they, they're still there every year, working away, beavering away, delivering trestles, and then picking them all up afterwards, stacking them up and getting them ready to take away. So the lions are a great assistance. Uh, the rotary in a wheel is another uh, invaluable um, assistance. The Inner Wheel Club uh, look after our Rotarians during the day, feeding them, watering them. They bring along all their home-baked goods or whatever they do, their f delicious food that they provide, and their great smiling faces all day. They uh, uh, serve the Rotarians as we come in and out, we've got to do our... We're, we're up at five o'clock in the morning, uh, at which stage we are preparing for the fair and guiding people and trying to make sure people don't bang into each other. All well, the traffic around the square is pretty fraught. Uh, we've tried to think of all sorts of ways that we might make it easier by perhaps having certain times at certain parts of the fair uh, can come along and get their stalls set up, but it's not been easy to sort of compartmentalise like that because of the layout of the fair. It's rather difficult uh, to visualise how we might do that. If anybody's got any good ideas, you could flick me a line at convener at martinboroughfair.org.nz and let me know how you think it might better be organised. Uh, we've thought of giving time slots so that people perhaps in the central square were supposed to be there from five till whatever. But people come the night before and set up, and uh, or not set up, but they get themselves ready to set up. Um, and some people are there at four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning setting up. So 
It's a bit difficult, and they're all over the all over the place setting up. Uh, so if you've got any good ideas, give me a call. But in a wheel, we can't say enough. Wonderful food, wonderful company. Thank you for your assistance. Of course, during the day, we have mountains of rubbish that's generated by the wrappings from the things that people buy from the mostly or a lot of it's from the food so we've got food wrappings and food trappings uh, and we last couple of years have started to get more serious about recycling and it's quite a fraught task the whole recycling thing where um uh, we set up our you know, glass, plastic, paper bins. That's all very well. And we have people policing them. Well, policing perhaps is too strong a word. Um, uh, to make sure that we get the right things in the right bins. But if you turn your back for a second, someone will pop a plastic in a glass or a glass in a plastic or a tin in a paper. Or, and it all gets contaminated. You've got to sort it out afterwards. So it's a bit of a trial and recycling is in its infancy a bit I think but we're trying we, we, we're experimenting with different ways that we can uh, uh, segment the rubbish so that it can be effectively recycled and our, our uh, rubbish footprint is reduced uh, so this year likewise we've had more of a thought about it we've re reduced our recycling the number of bins to make it simpler but we have also reduced the actual rubbish bins so that there's less place for people to put, th just chuck something in the rubbish. They have to find somewhere and it'll be a recycling station that is, they're more likely to see. Uh, and with that, we hope that they, there will be the tendency to recycle. There'll also be rubbish bins there. But well, you know, you can lead a horse to water and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying about the rubbish was we have our Kuranui College hockey team who, I could almost say traditionally now, come and help us out at the end of each day. So by the end of the fair, once we've left and the Kuranui Hockey Club have left, you'd almost, you wouldn't know we'd been there. There's uh, not a speck to be found and uh, they, uh, they're really fastidious and uh, we're thrilled to have them on board and helping us out. So well done. Kuranui. Uh, for the last couple of years, we have had a water truck which has been supplied to us, I believe, by Carterton Plumbing. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, because of the water problems in Martinborough, we've been a little bit stuck for fresh water. In February, we had to um, stop people from using the taps uh, because the water is not drinkable, it's non-potable water. So we've set up our water truck, or their water truck, uh, and we'll do it again in April, have another um, source of potable water. Uh, but uh, thank you to those folks for their uh, gift. Uh, the other people that help us out, of course, is Foldings Sound. Uh, they've been doing our sound, our PA system now for years. Um, so they come down from Palmerston North and uh, spend a couple of days with us uh, down on Friday night, Friday afternoon, where they're setting up the sound system. Uh, they used to string wires out through the trees uh, and set up the speakers hanging off branches here and there. For the last uh, probably, I don't know, six or seven years, we've used a cherry picker in the middle of the uh, square um, pop that up to 15 meters with the uh, long range speakers mounted on the top it's uh, given us a simpler setup and we hope a more centralized uh, address system yeah. and it seems to be working really well but certainly foldings are working with us all the time on this and uh, we're thinking of ways to improve it and they're coming up with ideas and how we might um, make sure that people at the ends of the fair still get to hear the announcements about lost children, found wallets, 
and so on, all the parked cars, cars with headlights on, all the sort of stuff that you'd expect to be uh, over a sound system. Now I've got some pictures here of the Martinborough Fair that I might just scroll through if you'll bear with me. Look at that. So this is the uh, cherry picker we're talking about. So our sound guys mount their um, equipment on the uh, d on the basket there and we whip that up to its 15 metres. And then of course we've got to put cones all around the bottom so people don't trip over those legs. And we have musicians that come along and perch on it and um, play their music. Uh, here's our marking out crew. Of course before the fair we have to run around and tell everybody where the uh, stalls are, where the positions are. And uh, so these folk are getting ready to mark out the grass area, which is a bit tricky because of the number of trees in the middle that they've got to get around. Here's just a shot of people at the fair during the day. So this is looking back up Texas Street. There's the uh, water truck to our right there. And this is looking back from that shot. And we've got our um, ANZ ATM, so four ATMs there, which get a bit of a hammering. And there are more ATMs up the um, uh, in Kitchener Road. And this is a young fellow who came from Hawke's Bay. He's a, a young blind boy who is wanting to join the Space Academy. So he's earning himself money by busking. Uh, so uh, he made a great, had a great presence there during the day. And this is just looking up one of the streets. I think it's probably Cambridge Street. But you can see that long line. That's just one of the streets. So there are the four main roads and then two of the smaller roads. So four, five, that's six roads all up that have uh, four, five, six, seven arms radiating out. Um, where's that? Oh, more fair. And that's looking in towards the square, the tree line, the trees in the square, you can see. Ahead of us there, so it's the square on the left. Uh, you've got the wine bank on the right there. And right down the other end, you'll see the bottling, the uh, Warapa bottlers. Um, and somewhere in the middle there, there'll be a queue of people lining up for the uh, Roshti stand, which has a queue all day long. And I'm hoping to have somewhere in here, we'll have some pictures of the Roshti stand. Where's that? Oh, that's uh, the wine bar to the left there. And we've got some um, uh, stalls set up, or well, they're not our stalls, they're set up by one of the shop owners. On their land there. That's uh, where's that looking back up? Maybe that's uh, oh, there was Cambridge Street. Well, there's the line for the Roshti stand, as you can see, perhaps you can see in the middle there. There's the line queuing for the Rosties. A simple dish. It's just potato and I don't know some magic ingredient, probably thirteen different herbs or secret herbs and spices or something. But boy, it's simple and good. Here we are, this is the, uh, <laughs> it's the assembly line for the Roshtis. I remember in early days they used to have four pans or five pans set up, but of course they are now uh, go through 400 kilos of potato each fair. 400 kilos, imagine that. So that goes through that uh, where they just shuffle the pans along there. took a few oh there we are so this is coming from the other end so this is where they're starting to get brown and delicious and being cut up ready to be served uh, no idea what that shot is I'll just wander through a few of these this is just looking up more of the streets um, so this is our um, inimitable in a wheel team uh, and setting up they've set up our um, 
breakfast and food for the day and they look after us for coffee and tea and all the rest of it. And that's the crew uh, taking a well-earned break in the fire station. Uh, so we go out from there and do the um, marshalling duties or just making sure that everybody's uh, looked after and that there are no issues and then we sort of circulate in and out sit here and have a cup of tea and then back out again on rubbish duty or recycling duty. One of our store holders. And we're probably sick of seeing pictures of the fair by now, so we might just Oh, that was a slight accident. Uh, but we might just um, stop that. Oh, we're back. So there we are. That was the Martin Raffair. Now, I thought I would um, take a break at about now. And we're three o'clock. And uh, play a wee bit of music. So I've got a guitar here. I'm going to play you a song. See how it works. Okay, here we go. Um, so, what are we going to do? Um, bah, 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 let's do um, this little song that I heard um, Satchmo sing. Yeah. Under a blanket of blue Just you and I beneath the stars Wrapped in the arms of sweet romance The night is ours Under a blanket of blue Let me be thrilled by all your charms Darling, I know my heart would dance Within your arms A summer night's magic Enthralling me so The night would be tragic If you weren't here To share it, my dear Covered with heaven above Let's dream a dream of love for two Wrapped in the arms of sweet romance Under a blanket of blue A summer night's magic Enthralling me so The night would be tragic If you were Share it, my dear, covered with heaven above. Let's dream a dream of love for two, wrapped in the arms of sweet romance. Under a blanket of blue, under a blanket of blue, under a blanket of blue. So we are Louis Armstrong. Not quite sure who wrote that song. But um, so, moving right along. Where does the money go? That's the question some people ask. Where does the money go? We get quite a lot of money. I guess, in the scheme of things, when you think of that. Um, a uh, chap, a uh, 90-year-old in Britain who decided to walk in his backyard and raise a couple of thousand dollars for charity and ended up raising $16 million. $100,000 sort of pales in comparison. But as a regular fundraiser for a club, um, the Martin Brefair does quite well, or reasonably well. And um, so the money... Uh, from the stalls 
is paid straight into the Martin Refere Trust, which is a separate organisation, quite a separate entity from the club as such. And then the Rotary Club of South Wairarapa makes uh, requests to the Martin Refere Trust for money. So we get requests or we have projects that we want to undertake and those are vetted by our board to be put forward to the Martin Refere Trust and uh, the, the Trust then um, uh, vets those proposals and uh, if accepted they are then um, honoured. Um, we have the, the effect of having this sort of m uh, fundraiser, this ongoing fundraiser at a club, does change your culture quite a bit. Normal Rotary clubs have a certain structure where they have um, uh, committees that are dedicated to um, dreaming up projects to raise money or the project then requires money raised for it. So if we want, for instance, as the um, Masterton uh, Club uh, wanted to send a bus to the islands, a, a surgical a, a medical bus to the islands, they decided that would be a great thing to do and then did a whole plan for it. How, where are we going to get the money from? Where are we going to get the bus from? So they had to sort of work from scratch and then raise the funds to cover it was a huge undertaking and they did it got the bus they um, kitted it out got it shipped up to the islands and and got it in operation got it garaged and maintained and so on um, a, a, a fantastic undertaking our culture then has developed slightly differently in that we now have an income and we then have to judiciously apportion that income to people who need it and there is no ne end to the need there are uh, people you know throughout the South Wairarapa which we service mostly with these funds um, we also service the uh, immediate Pacific Islands uh, so we're keen to hear for people who have needs in the Pacific Islands for our international committee uh, but having this fund source has driven really the structure of our club so now we have um, committees whose job it is to uh, decide where to spend the money as opposed to uh, what projects we can dream up and then try and find the money so uh, that's a culture that um, I personally am keen to see change. I'd like us to go back to a project focus, but it's so easy to just wait and people will ask you for money because everybody wants, they have a project. People have got things happening and there are, as I say, there are bursaries to finance and uh, um, overseas students and so on and so forth. Uh, so our, uh, our committee structure uh, is we have the community service slash now COVID-19 committee whose focus is, as it uh, probably appears from the name, the, from the, to the community, that is our local community or, or communities within the South Wairarapa, with a particular focus at the moment on COVID-19 recovery. And how can we help people recover from the effects of the pandemic? Are there th areas that need specific focus? And so that committee has looked for um, projects that people are doing that have impact and are, are um, driven by the needs brought about by the pandemic. Uh, one of the projects that uh, they have undertaken is to help the Featherston Community Centre establish um, consulting rooms so that the local medical centre and uh, medical professionals in the district can establish better health care um, consulting facilities. Um, there's a bit of a dearth in Featherston, people of, of uh, private facilities, so while we had the uh, community centre there had um, rooms, uh, privacy was an issue because, of course, because well, not of course, you wouldn't know, because the walls were glass. They had 
windows and all the walls. So it was like being in a bit of a fishbowl, uh, both vis- visually and auditorily, is it the word? Audiologically or whatever, you know, sound-wise. So um, the Rotary Club helped us to um, line those walls, gave us some money to help line those walls and to make them uh, private. We are at the tail end of this project now. I say we, we obviously, but there's another hat I have is uh, on the board for the Featherston Community Centre. So I will say we. Uh, we're coming to the end of that project now. Uh, the painters are there as we speak, probably, and the builders and painters working together to finalise some of the uh, little knickknacks that have to go in to uh, finish off tidying the uh, um, rooms up. That's all looking very good, very good, and we're very thankful to the Rotary Club uh, for seeing that, uh, for including us in their program. Um, the other uh, committees, there's the Youth and Seniors Committee. This used to be just the Youth Committee, uh, but um, our president, current president Brian Baxter, uh, decided that really we ought to extend that to the senior citizens as well and that we didn't really have a committee as such or a, an arm or a focus group that would look at senior citizens so we were mostly which most of our membership for goodness sake but anyway uh, uh, so they have a focus on youth and senior citizens so they're looking at ways to make life easier for the senior sits and carrying on with the uh, youth programs, uh, for instance, next week we've got the um, Rotary Young Drivers, something or other, R-Y-D-A. I keep thinking it's awards. Brian tells me it's something else. Anyway, it's uh, for young drivers, so we uh, sponsor a, a program that helps young drivers appreciate the gravity of the situation on the roads. Many young drivers just think, as probably you and I did back when we were getting our licences, that you just got your licence and hit the road running. Um, I remember sitting my licence. Uh, I think we got to do a handbrake hill start. Uh, we got to do a three-point turn and reversed into a driveway. Uh, managed to drive along the road without banging into anything, and the guy said, fine, you've got a license. And off I went. Wings on my feet. (laughs) And uh, uh, paid scant attention to the rest of the road. Fair to say, though, in those days, the traffic was lighter. I was brought up in uh, Devonport in Auckland, and the traffic from Devonport to Takapuna was usually pretty light. These days, it's bumper to bumper most of the time. Uh, and that's the problem, is that the cars are faster, uh, the roads uh, are packed with people, and you've just got to learn how to work with other people to share the road. And so the rider program teaches the students or the would-be drivers the perils and the, uh, the things that they should be looking out for. Fantastic uh, program. Uh, and so Rotary sponsors that as part of the youth uh, youth Awards, we look for um, youths within our community who are um, outstanding, who are leaders uh, in both uh, in team pursuits but also uh, psychologically, the leaders, people who lead other people, uh, uh, students who are showing those sort of um, outstanding qualities of compassion and uh, uh, team spiritedness and we recognise those bring these people together and uh, show them that their efforts which often seem to go unrewarded when you know people just do what they do naturally and they're natural leaders or they are helpful uh, they're compassionate uh, just to recognise that these people are effective in our society, that they're needed and cherished and I think that's a great uh, um, thing that the Rotary can bring to these folks. So there's the Youth Awards. Um, we also uh, do, oh, well, I'll move on from there, so I'm running a little low on time. Uh, youth, uh, uh, sorry, Environment and International is an, another co- committee. So we're looking at how we can best assist in 
making our environment a better place to be in. Last year, um, I was the president of the club last year, and so I rolled up the international and environment together. It occurred to me that environment was really a an international problem, that if we act locally, we can have global reach. The things that we do locally can have global reach. So it seemed to me that an international committee should also be looking at the environmental environmental issues within the country and within our local environment and how that impacts uh, internationally. So their focus is both local and international, um, but particularly looking at the Pacific Islands and how we can help out there. We uh, Their brief is also to make sure that we provide um, the emergency response kits uh, each year we provide a, few, a couple of uh, emergency response kits into the Rotary Emergency Response Kit program. Um, there's the shelter boxes that are provided for uh, emergencies as well. Uh, so the brief is to uh, provide money and put aside money and to have it provided into those programs. Uh, there's also um, our uh, more internal committees. There's the uh, membership committee, of course, which looks after, as that may suggest after our members, make sure that they are um, welcomed, that they have the tools they need to be members of the club and to, um, to learn and to grow within the uh, club. Uh, there is also the Club Development and Media Committee. Of course, their department is more looking about governance, governance of the club, uh, and its profile within the community. And then, of course, there's the Fellowship Committee, who are they're focused on making sure we have a bit of a good time while we're doing all of this. So they are making sure that birthdays get honoured and that um, uh, functions other than business meetings are carried out and are fun to go to. Um, so that's how the club is structured, um, mostly predicated on the gift that we have from the Martin Borough Fair. Uh, conference is coming up, Conference uh, 2021, and um, the focus and feature of the conference this year is changing our clubs for 2021 and beyond. I mentioned earlier the need for change, and in any organisation, uh, I remember many years ago having someone tell me in a sales context that businesses who are doing the same as they were 18 months ago will be out of business in 18 months' time, a broad brush scenario perhaps. But it does, uh, it does um, illustrate the need for change. I mean, they say that the only people that like change is a wet baby, or the only person that likes change, a wet baby. Uh, change is difficult. Uh, we're all, always used to doing the things we always used to do. Uh, they make sense to us. They're comfortable. Um, with the best will in the world, uh, where we have a, a, our own club, a divor diverse people, uh, enjoy each other's company. They love to get together on a weekly basis. We've tried to make it fortnightly but nobody will bite everybody wants to be there they want to have a yak they want to have a beer or a wine or whatever and get together and have a chat and a bit of dinner and um, they enjoy that uh, and with the best will in the world there are, people do sit at the same tables you know you sit with your mates people like the things that they are comfortable with and so to suggest change uh, is is a fraud you know we've got to uh, uh, as they say, take people along with you and into change. Uh, so the focus of the conference will be looking at how 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 does Rotary change its um, model going forward? Now there's a, another buzzword going forward. Um, how does Rotary change its model for the future? Because well, we're moving into a digitised world. Uh, we found we found suddenly that uh, people can work from home. And the wheels don't fall off businesses. Now, who would have thought that? 
a couple of years ago, three, four, five years ago, I was uh, in a company working from home part of the time. Uh, and going in for meetings, and they were a little bit nervous about that. Now, what was I doing at home? You know, and I would fill in my timesheets or whatever. Uh, but there's always that thought: oh, you might not be quite working as hard as you would be at work. Well, suddenly we find that people who are working from home work better. They're less distracted. They work longer hours. They are more productive, and so working from home has become a reality. Uh, and accepted. Uh, so, what does that mean for Rotary? We've got a we're a connected world. Um, during the lockdown, as many other people and organisations found, we had Zoom meetings. We discovered Zoom, and people of my age and older were discovering how to work their computers and work their cameras and switch on sound and mute and unmute and uh, get the camera happening. And uh, many had backgrounds going. One of our folks had uh, his favourite a picture of his favourite pub in the background, so he was lounging in the pub during the meetings. All great technology, uh, but what does all this mean for Rotary going forwards? That for the club of the future, do young people? When I say young people, I guess I'm talking, you know, forty plus. Uh, what do they want? What what would I have wanted at forty? in a club, in a group, my main, uh, um, I suppose my main need would, would be perhaps to help, if that was my mindset, uh, to help with the community, to do good, to give back, uh, all of these sorts of thoughts. Um, the rotary structure at the moment in many clubs is to have the uh, social aspect of it as, as quite predominant where we're getting together for a chat and a beer, a meal, uh, invite a speaker along. And I personally find that very interesting. I like talking to the people in the club. I find them all of like mind. They're philanthropical, um, eager, keen, bright. Um, uh, uh, they're the sorts of people you want to know. Uh, but many don't have the time or don't feel they have the time to spend in that pursuit. They'd rather just... Do, be able to do a project of some sort. And is that how we move forward? Many of our clubs have moved to an e-format, what they call the e-clubs, where they meet simply by Zoom. They meet, well, not by Zoom but particularly, but by video conferencing in one form or another. Uh, clubs can then span the globe, where people from various countries can be in the same e-club. Uh, and then they will uh, settle on a project, that needs doing somewhere in the world and go about raising the funds internationally to uh, produce the, the ends that they desire. Uh, is that the way forward? So uh, lots of these things need to be talked through now and will be, I'm hoping, at our upcoming conference. Uh, of course, things like gender inclusiveness and diversity will be high on the list. I just note those couple of things that I had written down here to include. Um, important to uh, see that our clubs become more diverse as time goes by. Um, it's easy to, uh, people who are in a, an organisation tend to invite people that they spend a lot of time with to come and be part of their organisation. So um, it's natural that the club should grow to be like the club. Uh, reaching outside ourselves into uh, a different cultures and uh, different ways of thinking and inviting them to join us uh, is an important um, paradigm change that we need to embrace. But anyway, that's perhaps the future. And uh, after this conference, I'm hoping that we'll have a lot of good ideas to pull that forward. Anyway, I think we've pretty much run out of time. So I'm going to sign off. Um, I've got probably a couple of minutes, so I might just have to go out with a song. Good excuse for me to play a song. So what do we do? What about um, Paul McCartney? He's one of my favourites. Um. When I find myself in times of trouble 
Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be And in my hour of darkness She is standing right in front of me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. When the broken hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. Still be parted, they will still light that shines on me. Shine on till tomorrow, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. night is cloudy, still a light that shines on me, shine on till tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. So, as they say, that's it from us. Rotary matters in this world. And here it is uh, the end of our time at Rotary Matters. Goodbye. Stop.